Howdy folks, man, another week went by. So we often get asked about why we want to be a doctor. Why do you want to go into medicine? Why this, why that, all these kind of stuff. If you are thinking about going into medicine, I think be prepared that you will have to justify yourself for probably the rest of your life or for many, many foreseeable years in the future rather than saying why we want to go to med school or become a doctor. In this episode, we're going to focus on what I think, personally, the three main pros and three main cons about being a doctor. Let's go! Howdy folks, this is Dr. Bao. You might recognize me as Pushy from Pushy Mushy, yeah! But I have officially transformed into Dr. Bao. Here, we will be going over life as a doctor and answering questions on being a doctor or how to be one. Because my schedule is actually fairly hectic and because I need to multitask to a certain degree, most of my video clips will be while I'm doing something else, such as walking, exercising, taking a break from work, driving, or while I'm on the toilet. Seriously. The goal of this channel is to make it useful for those of you who might be interested in learning more about a doctor's life. You could be a student, a resident, a fellow, an attending, a parent, or someone who simply loves to information overload yourself. One thing I would like to emphasize is that although I do work and am affiliated with some hospitals and med school, what I say does not represent the opinion of any entity except myself. Please like or dislike, hopefully not dislike. Subscribe, comment, share, and press that bell icon. Great. So, instead of doing pros and cons in that particular order, we're gonna start with cons first because this is my channel and I get to do almost whatever I wanna do. So, con number one of being a doctor is that you have to go through long training with overall inflexible hours, at least during the training stage. What I mean by that is, you know, we kind of touched upon this briefly last episode, and we can talk about this more in future episodes. But overall, in order to become a doctor, assuming the traditional path, one has to go through four years of college, four years of med school, some years of residency, and potentially, possibly, some years of fellowship training. Those hours and years are long, you know, from college all the way to becoming an attending physician. During those time, your schedule is relatively inflexible, meaning that you have to go to college, obviously. Med school, the same thing. There's not really a whole lot of discussion around, oh, you know, can I skip this course or can I take another course? During your clinical training where you rotate through electives, yes, you do have some flexibility, but Generally speaking, you still have to go to courses, you still have to rotate through clinical training and graduate from med school. Coming to residency, uh, obviously there is now the duty out regulation, so every residency training program should comply to the ACGME rule and you shouldn't be working more than 80 hours a week and there are also how many consecutive hours you can work or one can work. Don't expect to go through a residency program less than 40 hours a week of training. I think that would be a highly false hope or expectation and then if you choose to become a subspecialist and you go through fellowship training that would be pretty much the same thing it's basically a residency extension uh, and sometimes we call fellows glorified residents so from college all the way to finishing either residency or fellowship your hours are gonna be long and they're gonna be hard and they're gonna be relatively inflexible that's con number one con number two for going to med school or becoming a doctor is debt depending on how deep your pocket is or your family's pocket is, this might not be a concern for you or this might be a huge concern for you, really depending on what's your financial situation. But, you know, generally speaking, going through med school is a pretty expensive process. I will be very honest over here, my pocket isn't deep or wasn't deep and uh, my family's pocket also wasn't deep. And so for me, going through med school in college, either I relied on scholarship, financial aid, or my own work outside of school. However, having said all that, there are ways around this. There is the public service loan forgiveness program that one can potentially consider, which I am actually doing, that will help you 
or help anyone who is interested in this tremendously in terms of how much loan you have to pay back in the future after graduation. So there are ways around the financial situation, but generally speaking, med school is a very expensive process and residency plus fellowship, you don't really earn a whole lot. So the overall process from college all the way to residency or fellowship is a fairly expensive process in that you spend a lot and you don't earn a whole lot. The third con of going to med school or becoming a doctor is the fact that being a doctor sometimes is very emotionally draining. And what I mean by that is sometimes your patients die and you have to learn how to deal with these emotions. You have to sort of detach yourself from time to time. You know, almost all of us, if not all, will face some kind of lawsuits in our career. And that is also difficult at times. And then obviously our job itself, you know, being a doctor, it's pretty high stress. One can argue that high stress, maybe that means high reward. Uh, maybe that means, uh, you know, you get higher personal satisfaction in the end. But generally speaking, our day-to-day -day life is pretty stressful. So I would say that sometimes being a doctor can be really emotionally draining. And that would be the third con. Pro number one of being a doctor is personal satisfaction. And I think that's very, very important. We said this before, it's a very long process. There's a lot of obstacles that we all need to conquer. But in the end, when you really make that difference in a patient's life or in a patient's family's lives, it's a very rewarding feeling. It is a very satisfying experience. It really provides you with a sense of accomplishment. At some point, if you become a doctor, at some point in your life, you're gonna feel that you are truly making a difference in people's lives and you are exerting a positive influence into your communities and perhaps also your family. So I think pro number one, it is a very, very satisfying experience to become a doctor. Pro number two has to do with our job as a physician itself. Once you become an attendee, your life is a lot better. You can enjoy a few things and those qualities, three main things in my opinion, I believe give rise to pro number two. Job security, decent salary, and job flexibility, if you so desire. Once you become an attending, it is very hard, very, very hard for you to get fired. It is not impossible. And if you are a jerk and you don't practice standard medicine, I think there is a good chance that you're gonna get fired. But if you are a good person, good doctor, the reason why you went to med school in the first place, supposedly, it is very, very difficult for you to get fired. Even if you get fired, <laughs> there are ways that you can go to another place, another state and repractice medicine. So job security is number one. Number two is decent salary. I think this is something that we said before that at least one of the cons is debt. And in the previous episode, we said you were making minimum wages for quite a few years. Once you become an attendee, your salary is decent. Again, I don't think you're gonna bank or I don't think you're gonna call yourself rich with an attendee salary. However, I personally believe most attending physicians would agree that their salaries make them and their families at least well off. You know, you don't have to worry about what you need to put on the table or what you need to uh, pay to get stuff on the table tonight. Most of us don't have to worry about the fees associated with educating our kids. Most of us don't have to worry about the financial stuff that goes on with our activities of daily life. So I think overall, we have a decent salary. I'm not gonna lie. Some of us are better paid than others, but generally speaking, even, even one of the least paid doctors like pediatricians or pediatric subspecialists, such as myself. You know, I think generally speaking, we are well off. So I think decent salary is the second component of pro number two. The third component of pro number two is job flexibility, if you so desire. Once you become an attending physician, there's a lot of ways you can schedule your schedule. Well, that was a redundant, but you can 
you know, schedule your work hours. Most of us can choose what kind of setting we want to work at. For example, inpatient or in the hospital versus primary care or in an office setting or a combination of the two or other options. Depending on what kind of settings you choose, your work hours might be a little different, but it is generally pretty feasible to talk about your work hours with your employers, with your colleagues to schedule arrangements around whatever you want to do in life. So it is very possible to have weekends off. Uh, not all the time, but it is very possible to have weekends off. It is very possible to be nine to five. It is very possible to have holidays off to spend with your family. It is also possible to work locum tenants, which means you sign on with a company that kind of places you at different hospitals or clinics and you work however many shifts you want. I have colleagues who work zero, zero shifts per month because you know they work the previous month the entire month and so they have the whole month off. I have colleagues who work five days a week and have weekends off. I have colleagues who work seven on seven off meaning you work seven days straight and then seven days off. So you do have the power to dictate your work flexibility. Pro number three is that you are the main person who is able to dictate the direction of your career. What I mean by that is once you become an attending physician, you have the option to practice medicine and stay under the radar. I, I am at a red light, so I get to uh, look at the screen. So you have the option to stay under the radar and practice medicine, meaning that you just want to be a doctor by say, just want to be a doctor. I don't mean in any fashion that is personal or offensive some of my colleagues they just want to practice medicine they just want to be doctors they don't want to be involved in admin they don't want to be involved in, in teaching they don't want to be involved in research they just want to be doctors and i think there is absolutely nothing wrong with that for some of my colleagues who want to advance in uh, what we call academia or academic medicine uh, they teach they do research and they try to go up the uh, the ladder in terms of uh, academic promotion meaning instructorship assistant professorship, associate professorship, and full professorship at academic centers. Or some of my colleagues are more into the business side of things and they become admin. They sit in the C-suite of hospitals or uh, major academic centers. So what you want to do with your life after you become an attending physician is totally up to you. And I think that is a great thing. You know, you are not stuck in one position. And let's say, hopefully that doesn't happen, but that does happen at times. Let's say you become an attending physician and you find out, you know what? Medicine is not the thing I wanna do. You can go into industry. You know, you can work for pharmaceutical companies. You can work for other private sectors that require medical knowledge and expertise. And so, you know, if you want to, you have the freedom and ability to look for other jobs besides practicing medicine. That doesn't mean you're always gonna be successful, but that is an option too, and that does happen to some of my colleagues. So those are the three pros and three cons. I'm sorry, those are the three cons and three pros because I get to dictate the order of how I want to go in this video clip. But the three cons and the three pros of becoming a doctor. If you have questions about medicine or being a doctor, leave a comment. Eventually I'll get back to you. And um, for now, best of luck. Wow, there's a lot of fire trucks and police cars around. Not really sure what's going on. I guess they're here because Mushi is too hot. Wow! Shout out to Mushi.